Hi everybody and welcome back to Alicia Diane Art. I'm Alicia Diane and we are doing our book club review. This is book two, Selling for Dummies, and this is our fourth review. So this week we read chapters seven, we, no, not seven and eight, eight and nine. <laughs> we read chapters eight and nine. Um, this week's reading was also a pretty hefty one. It took me a while to get through it. Uh, but I would say that the bulk of it was in chapter 9 that took me the longest to read. Uh, let me see where I started. No, let me see. I'm on the wrong one. <laughs> I think that is for the next week. Okay, so we read chapters 6 and 7. Why am I just like losing my head right now? So we read chapters 6 and 7. I'm sorry about that. So the bulk of it was in chapter 7, not in chapter 9. It was in chapter 7. I'm sorry, this is live, so there's no editing. So in chapter 6, um, if you haven't already read it, I would recommend just kind of skipping that chapter because it was honestly, if you're like over the age of 60, you probably already know what's in that chapter because it's really about technology. It's really about just using the internet and like using a smartphone and tablet and all of that sort of thing and like cloud services. So all of that as like a sales tool or like as a, just an extra tool to help you in your sales. And I would, like I said, if you're under 60, <laughs> like I wouldn't even think if you're in your 50s, you probably know most of this. Most people already know how to use a GPS and you know how to put things on the cloud and all of that sort of thing. So how to make like a PowerPoint presentation. If you don't know how to make a PowerPoint presentation, um, probably learn how to make a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, so it's really not that complicated. Uh, you can learn how to use Google Suite. I mean, talked about Microsoft Office, which I think um, most of us have already transitioned to like Google Workspace and like Google Office. So like I said, chapter six, uh, you can skip that one if you haven't already read it. And chapter seven, that one was a really good one. It took me a while to get through it, but I think it was worthwhile because it really talked about like prospecting, which is, um, it actually gave a definition, which is the process of searching for people to whom to sell your product and services. And that is, I think the area that I probably need the most growth personally speaking and honestly speaking because I feel like just being able to just find the right people for your product and find the people to sell to and kind of realizing that you can get leads wherever you go um, to anyone that you meet even if that person that you're directly speaking to is not a potential client likely that they know somebody um, who might be and who possibly is a good client for you or they might come across somebody who might be a good client for you. So it did give a lot of resources and how to do that. It really broke down like, you know, let's see, looking, where to start looking. So let me see what it said about where to start looking. Hmm. It should like basically should take up like 75% of your time. It should be like looking for clients and then 25% should go towards like developing your product knowledge. So I think you should always, we talked about product knowledge before. I think it really, um, too, especially if you're doing your own product, learning how to get past that initial kind of um, fear or doubt or worry that people are going to like your product, I think it's a big part of it. You have to really believe in what you're selling. And sometimes that can be hard for us as artists to kind of like boast about what we're already doing. Um, I mean, at least I know that that has been my experience. And I know that and a lot of people are always like, Artists are really tough on themselves. They're always trying to get better. I mean, if you're telling your own stories, it's even more because then it's like super, feels super personal. So you do want to learn how to just be your own cheerleader in that respect and be able to really like, like, no, like my product is really good. Like I believe in it. I, I know that what I'm doing, like try to also find things that you also buy that are similar, stories that are similar. So if you have like, for me, like my jaded story, <laughs> uh, you know, it's not like for the faint of heart. It's like, you know, there's a lot of like strong subject matter in it. There's a lot of like drama. And I like, hey, like a lot of the things that I actually watch are similar. Like I would compare it to like um, something like a Game of Thrones for a little bit of a younger audience. <laughs> it's like just a lot of like um, that sort of, you know, 
it's it's tough you know what i mean like the, the characters are not just taking a walk in the park they're actually going through things so just finding things that you want to hold on to i think is a good way to kind of find that strength to be able to to be able to sell to that prospect when you come in contact with them and know like hey this is something that's really cool that i'm doing and be able to have that sort of faith and confidence when you're talking about what you, whatever it is that you're selling whether it's your art whether it's your books or whatever and let's see um finding people in your friends and family like that was something that i also like looked into when i was doing like um a course for like starting kickstarter and um like releasing my own products like when i first started building like um like a client list this was also something that they pointed out like you don't want to neglect the people in your immediate circle and even like your associates like contact them at tell them what you're doing and just say hey this is you know can i add you to um my contact list because you know i want you to know about what i'm doing and share with you this and um, even if they might not buy it directly they still might point you out to somebody especially if it's somebody that likes you hopefully it is someone that actually you know cares about you and then they're more likely to actually try and help you to get what you're trying to do across so it says like you know don't um don't neglect those people in your immediate circle so i thought that was that was good. That was also something that I heard from another source. Uh, let's see, tapping into the people that you already like done business with, like don't neglect like, your past clients, even if it's people that you know have bought from you maybe once or twice. Um, still keep them in contact and like see if there's ways for you to prospect there. Um, I mentioned Toastmasters. I had looked into Toastmasters and have been a part of a few Toastmaster groups. So I thought that was good that it kind of um, reiterated that uh, let's see I think it one of the really cool things about this chapter was just the idea of um, not not discounting people because I always think like, think because what I do is such a niche thing that I feel like I have to find like specific type of people but I think it's also important a reminder in what this chapter really reminded me is that you don't want to really neglect anybody anybody that you kind of come into contact with is somebody who could potentially um, if not directly lead you to somebody who could be a potential client so I thought that that was really important so even if you're doing something niche like I'm doing something niche that's like very specific um, you could still like say keep your business card around you like ask them about the type of business they do and when they ask you about what you do just immediately give them a business card and like start the conversation so I think that was an important touch like always like when you're introducing what you do give them your business card so that they have it um, whenever they think back or something prompts them to remember what it is that you're doing whether you're an illustrator or whether you're you know a graphic designer or whatever if something comes up um, they're going to remember you and then they're going to go back to that business card so I thought you know that's something that I hadn't tried before I mean of course I've given my business card out very like randomly sporadically sort of a thing but just being more ready and like have it in your mind to just be ready to give your business card out to anybody you're introduced to I thought that was a good um, way of prompting potential sales uh, this was a good chapter number seven was like I said number six uh, was kind of a you know you didn't really need to read that one we are reading selling for dummies like uh this is the book so if you haven't already you can go ahead and grab it and jump into our reading um, I'm gonna try one more week just to kind of test because I wanted to see like maybe two chapters a week might be too much but I want to try one more week with two chapters and I'll check in with you guys next week to see if we want to jump it down to one chapter a week or if we want to keep it at two chapters but either way I think it's um it's a lot of useful information um, some of the stuff is like more for corporate type of selling but I still feel like there's a lot of like nuggets that are kind of hidden like randomly around and that we can find and we can use and we can apply to art so um i want to keep reading hopefully you guys are getting some good stuff out of this and uh, we're gonna just keep on going and thank you guys so much for joining me for this time and i will see you tomorrow we're going to be doing studying the masters with a new illustration so i hope that you join me tomorrow at 10 a.m pacific and i will see you guys for the next review next week okay so have a great weekend memorial day weekend it's my anniversary weekend so be grateful live balanced be yourself and i'll see you next time Bye-bye.